There were two goats on a rubbish tip, chewing pieces of old rubbish. You know, boots, tires, tin cans, and so on. One of them came across a canister of old film and started chewing through the plastic strip of the film, having a whale of a time. The other goat called across to him and said, Hey, are you enjoying that film? And he said, It's not bad, but I preferred the book. In music, I, I'm not simply someone who creates sounds. Since relatively early age, I've been aware there's a lot more to life than the appearance that we see day to day. In fact, I would go so far as to say that I would look a lot further than science to the objective worlds behind physical matter that are not formally acknowledged by any proper scientific institution as yet. So from that point of view, I really see the energy behind sound as as important as the music itself. And my interest in the inner dimensions of sound. In indie music, there's this idea of the eternal sound or the, the uh, unstruck sound, which is like a sound, an eternal sound that has no beginning and no end, it just is there. And this echoes very much the idea of presence or a spiritual energy which is which is with us all the time except most people are as good as unaware completely As the two fish went to see a wise fish and they asked him where they could find water and he told them it was all around them and they went away dissatisfied What were your parents' reactions when you first told them that you were interested in becoming a composer? They came to a concert once, but they, they were more concerned to say that there was no food at the hotel other, afterwards than they were to compliment me on the music. They don't understand my world. They didn't understand my world. It was... Uh, I had, to, I had to somehow deal with them in a way that was who they were rather than who I was. I don't see this world as purely physical, although I think most scientists would. I feel sometimes an influence from other sources, perhaps um, invisible beings or extraterrestrials quite strongly. One occasion I had the whole room was full of the scent of roses when I was composing. And I'm, I'm very sure that that was not just me. I like to think, as John Cage did, that one can go beyond intent. And that's what makes music more interesting. It's not just personal, it goes to the deeper cosmos. And you can allow things to happen which are less ego-based, less surface-based, and much more to do with a real experience which is ultimately the unified universe speaking to itself through music and the listener. Well, I'm aware that that there are certain currents of energy that, that will have a, a special effect on people when they listen. Um, so it's really more a familiarity with what I call the, the reservoir of impressions rather than something that's engineered or deliberately pulled out of the air. It's, when you have a friendship with somebody, it's not that you continue to create the friendship, it's more like you somehow are fed by and feed into, you give to the friendship. The reservoir of impressions that I've been engaged with since I was 16, particularly, they are, in a sense, almost like an entity in themselves, regardless of whether there are others involved. I, I think I'd like my music to, to free people from being programmed. We have too many programming, too much mind control in this society. There's not enough liberal, in the different sense of the word, spirited or wild energy circulating. So what do I want my music to achieve? I want it to allow people to breathe 
in a deep way so they can no longer feel 